Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is November 15th, I guess. Something like that. It's Monday, I know that. And I went over to Rudy's right after work to uh, to do some work and today he didn't have nothing for me. So came home, had dinner, and now I'm back out in the shop. And we're gonna start tearing this, uh, this engine down. Uh, the plan is tonight to get basically the the entire engine minus the front timing cover crankshaft pulley and crankshaft tore out or tore down so we'll take the oil pump or the oil filter off the hydraulic pump we'll take the side cover off we'll take all the the um, lifters out or the cam followers out take the water pump off uh, the governor housing the water jacket cover on this side then we'll flip the engine over we'll take the oil pan off uh, loosen the connecting rods remove the oil pump um, from there we should be able to push the pistons and rods out the top and then last will probably be the rear main seal and that's as far as we'll be able to get um, just because for one thing that's going to be a lot for probably like the hour and a half I have to work on it so I'm probably going to do a bit of a time lapse here a lot of this stuff I've already talked about and how it comes off but the oil filter is just four bolts on the bottom of the base plate Hydraulic pump, same thing. There's two bolts on the bottom, two bolts on the top. Uh, the inspection cover for the side of the valve tappets, or the I shouldn't say the tappets, but the lifters. That's should be four bolts. That plate comes off. The water pump is four bolts. We will have to loosen. Well, actually, we shouldn't have to do anything with the clamps here. Um, I'll probably loosen the belt. And get that off. This needs to be replaced anyways. This belt is really dry rotted. Uh, the governor is two bolts here and I want to say that I think I think there's one bolt here at the bottom that holds it and that's covered with dirt. Yeah I think it's right here and then the side cover for the water jacket is just a bunch of uh, mostly bolts but there are a series of nuts on studs as well oil pan has a whole ton of bolts on it but it's really self-explanatory you really can't mess it up so before we get started I wanted to I kinda made a makeshift table here you know, all the times I've worked on tractors and I haven't gotten myself one of them rolling tool carts. So a couple five gallon buckets and a half a sheet of plywood does, does the trick. But this is what I do to organize all my bolts. It's really cheap and really easy. All you need is a box of Ziploc bags and a permanent marker. And then I just mark on them. Oil filter, water pump, rear main, water jacket cover, lifter cover, live hydraulic pump oil pan and I've got a whole series of bags that I've already filled up with bolts you know from splitting the tractor and doing all that so there's still a series of parts here on the ground I haven't gotten around to picking up but I'm just I've been so busy you guys it, it's been crazy but 
let's uh let's get on with the wrenching because like i said we don't have much time so the goal is to get this thing as bare as we can minus the timing cover and the crankshaft so let's get started Look at that. That's a problem right there. Big problem. Oh boy. Another problem. Let me uh, clean my hands off here. I'll flip the camera around so you guys can see. Okay, you guys are going to have to bear with me. I'm holding a flashlight and the camera with one hand. And see the cam gear here? I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can hear it for sure. It is way loose. Just like the live hydraulic pump gear. So that would be probably a huge source of our problem. Which is what I suspected. I was kind of suspecting there was a problem with the timing gears, and uh, there is. So let's keep going. Uh, we'll pull the pull the plate off the side here. Pull all the valve lifters out, or the cam followers, I should say. Then we'll work on the front end and move around to the other side, and then we'll flip it over.
Gonna have to get a bigger screwdriver. For some reason that one don't want to come all the way out. Neither does that one. We'll have to figure these two out. My guess is there's some galling on these lifters. I do not recommend doing it this way. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the entire machine surface here is like chipping away around the edge. It should be perfectly circle and round. Here, I'll, I'll show you guys a nice one. If you can see the difference here, very deteriorated. Not really any wear on the, the face, but the edges are terrible. Well, those are going to have to be replaced for sure, and I'm guessing this one's probably the same way. Oh yeah, terrible. Terrible. If you guys can see, this entire edge is just eaten away. Alright, I'm going to remove this oil line fitting and then we'll move on to the front. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do with this water pump is I'm going to loosen the, the collar here, the adjustment collar or the front flange. And in order to do so, there's a lock nut here with a, a set screw. So I'm going to loosen the lock nut and then turn out the set screw so that I can turn, oops, sorry, so that I can turn this collar. And if you want to if you want to be real safe about it, you can just take the set screw out so that it doesn't bind on you. And then you might have to give it some persuasion with a brass punch. And it doesn't want to turn. So you have to be very careful with with uh, using any type of steel tools on this collar because these collars crack very easily. So since this one's being difficult, what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the fan blade off and then clean up these threads and then put a whole bunch of lube on there just to see if I can get it to, uh, let's see if I can't knock it down the other way a little bit. Okay, it's turning one way, so we know we got some movement. So I'll take this fan blade off and uh, clean up the threads and then we'll get some lube and see if we can't get it spun out. 
Okay, real quick, one of the things that I found, number one, was this piece here, I call it the dog bone, is usually held on with a taper pin. So the pin has a, a machined flat surface on one side so that it can engage with the flat spot on the side of the pump here. But this is an aftermarket pump, so they've just got a regular bolt through and it's a round machine surface that's in here. So the bolt has to go through that round machine surface. So that's one thing I noticed with this aftermarket pump. Another thing I noticed was this is your packing nut. And it is literally, I mean it wasn't even tight, it was just, I spun it out just by hand. And this thing should be tight. So I can imagine that this water pump was probably leaking right out of the box. Something that you guys should probably check. Just a word to the wise, if you get these aftermarket pumps, check these things over, make sure that they're good before you put them on. And then after you get them installed, before putting your radiator and everything else in, make sure that everything is good and tight. So just a word to the wise. So we'll keep going. I basically pulled that dog bone off, then we got to take these two bolts and these two, these are like a stud bolt combo, and then the fan will come off. Alright, so it took quite a bit of doing, but I'll show you really quick. So these threads, I always recommend, whether you buy an aftermarket pump or you rebuild your original, I prefer to rebuild the original, but I always recommend coating all these threads with a very liberal coat of grease and then work this, work this flange in and out. Well, now it's, now it's stuck. <laughs> Probably just needs a light. There we go. Work this flange in and out several times. That way you get the grease evenly distributed on here. Wipe off any excess, but always leave these greased. You know, just wipe it off with your finger. You don't have to use a rag because that'll take it out of, out of the threads on the pump. But this is how you adjust your belt tension for the crankshaft to, to fan or water pump belt. So now that we got that done, we can pull the water pump off, move around to the other side, do the governor. Running out of battery. I'm also running out of battery on my camera, so... That's garbage. Let's move along to the other side. We'll pull the governor. Actually, I'll just spin the engine around so that way we can get some light on that side. We'll pull the governor, pull the water jacket plate, and go from there.
Okay. Gonna have to try a different attack on that one. There we go, governor's off. Not doing very good so far. Now we're making some type of progress. I don't know why all of a sudden it's working now. All right, well, the rest, the rest I'll have to do by hand. Like I said, in a, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous video, but my air compressor motor, the electric motor, took a dump, so no air tools. It's always the messy part of the job. Flipping it over, because there's always a little residual coolant that comes out. So, that oil pan is really pushed in. That's a common thing. A lot of times I can get by with knocking the bottom back out. If you put it out in the lawn and use a four by four post with a sledgehammer or a two pound maul, a lot of times you can get these things flattened out pretty nicely. So. We'll go ahead and work on getting that off. And I'm going to turn the camera off just to conserve battery, but it's just a series of bolts all the way around the pan. So we'll work on getting that off. Oh man, that thing's not even, it's not even stuck down. Quite a bit of sludge in the bottom, but not terrible. Well, the good thing is it doesn't seem to be a whole lot of play in the rod bearings, so that's good. Let's go ahead and get the oil pump out, and then we'll, uh, it's just these two bolts here, then it should pull right out. Get the oil pump out, then we'll start working on the, uh, oh, this doesn't have fold-over locks on it, it's got safety wire 
on everything, which is good because I have lots of safety wire, so or mechanics wire, if you will. That's good. Saves us a step. Um, pull the oil pump out, loosen and remove the rod bearing caps. Oh, this one. Two of them are missing safety wire. So, this has definitely been opened up before at some point. I can tell just by the way some things are. You know, there's a lot of loose bolts and things like that. But anyway, pull the pump, pull the rod caps, push the pistons and rods out, and then uh, that'll probably be it for tonight. So, and my hands are getting greasier by the second. Well, the good news is the oil pump has virtually no play in the top. If you guys remember back to Squatch Senior's Super M, he had a lot of play in this top end of the of the pump. The gear itself looks good, so that's good. So now, now that my hands are all full of oil again, now we'll uh Get rid of this mechanics wire that's left on number one and two cylinders, three and four, it's missing. So we'll get those out. Loosen the rod caps, push the pistons out. And I, I like to push or turn the engine sideways when I do that. That way the pistons don't just fall out. So let's do that. Well, just on first inspection, I got the pistons just pushed out the top just enough to clear the rings. And they don't look terrible. But let's get them all the way out here and Got aluminum pistons, so it's definitely had a an overhaul at some time. Ridge on number one cylinder, whoops, sorry, is uh, sorry again, quite pronounced. Now they don't look, the pistons look actually really nice, except for number four. <laughs> number four and and number four is probably the worst. It's got some pretty significant scoring on it, but let me clean my hands up here. And uh, we'll take a quick look at them. Tell you what, guys, change of plans. I just looked at the clock and uh, it is time for me to get inside and in order to do that I gotta clean up because if I leave it like this it's gonna drive me nuts but um, why don't we why don't we stop here we'll uh, 
The next video we'll probably talk about and do the removal of the front crankshaft pulley. You know, we got to cut those welds, remove the pulley, and then uh, remove the timing cover, pull the cam, pull the crank, rear main seal, and that's really all that's left. So after that, I think we'll make another video that addresses what issues that we found and, you know, measuring up the engine, taking a look at the crankshaft to see what that looks like. Um, the camshaft, I don't know, with that loose cam gear, I'm really hoping it's not a worn keyway in the camshaft. Hopefully it's just a, a bad key or a bad gear, but we'll just have to play it by ear from this point. So we got everything done except for pulling the rear main seal and that's just a few bolts, but like I said, I got to get inside and, and relax a little bit and get to bed. So. That's going to end this video. We got pretty much everything we wanted to accomplish done in about an hour and a half. So that's pretty good considering the little speed bumps we ran into with, you know, the water pump and, and some of the other things. But anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for wrenching with me. And as always, make sure you hit that like, share, comment, and subscribe. And Connor, you're missing all the fun, man. <laughs> anyway. Talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.